today, as you can hear, it's raining. Something that obviously happens very frequently in the rainforest. But one thing it does mean is that my camera traps get a lot of water spots on the front um, and just basically makes it trickier to get the images I'm after. So what I've got to do is hike up to my traps, pray that this rain is going to stop and then I can make sure that they've got fresh batteries, um, fresh cards and make sure that those lenses are nice and clean uh, for the next coming days. But this rain is pretty heavy and I'm concerned that it might not stop today. Um, but anyway, it's lovely to be out in the jungle. Um, you'll notice I'm wearing a camouflage poncho. Uh, this is because the camouflage poncho was pretty much the cheapest poncho I could get. And ponchos are fantastic um, for working conditions where you've got a load of rain coming down. Because um, basically what I can do is have my camera underneath um, so I can easily access it whilst it's still not going to get wet. And also it's covering up my backpack and keeping all of me dry. And when I stop later for a bit of lunch, I can pull this one out because it's got some little loops on each of the corners and use it as a tarp that basically means I keep a lot drier um, and it just makes you a bit more comfortable. You know, having a coat on, yeah, it's great, but they get saturated eventually. Whereas this means I can keep dry and also use it for a variety of different scenarios. It also works quite well as a hide um, whilst also keeping it really compact and lightweight for when I'm carrying it around in the jungle. But yeah, camouflage is great, blends in quite nicely, and of course, it's keeping me rather dry that's pretty good. So right, let's get going. So I've just got up to my first camera trap and uh, everything's still in position, uh, flashes are all still on, uh, no visible damage, that's really good. Um, I've just checked the trigger and we have 14 triggers, um, that's quite good. Often with um, especially active triggers, the lower the number, um, if you're kind of mid uh, 10 to 15, 20, I mean this has only been out for 3-4 uh, days. If you're around those kind of numbers, often it's more likely that you've got the precision right um, and that you're not just getting loads of false triggers, so this is really good. But because it's still hammering down and I've got a camera much deeper into the forest, I'm going to leave this one in place and then as I work my way back towards camp um, a little bit later, I will come and check this. But looks pretty good, you never know, um, but I can tell from here that the rain is already on the lens, so it's going to need a clean, a refresh. Uh, and be set and ready to go. But uh, you never know with these things, it could be a real nice success. But time to head on and uh, find my next trap. So I'm just crossing the last river on the way to my second camera trap and it is still absolutely pouring it down. Uh, I think probably when I get there I'm going to make some sort of bivy out of my, uh, out of my um, poncho to help keep the rain off whilst I work. Um, you know, I don't want to open the camera box with all the rain falling down on top of me. But even if I don't get straight to work, just sitting out and enjoying the rain and the sound is absolutely gorgeous. I mean. Where else in the world you hear rain just trickling off so many leaves, it's just such a beautiful sound um, and I'm thoroughly enjoying being here, you know, completely alone in the middle of the rainforest with just the sounds of nature, absolutely cracking. So I'm currently under my makeshift tarp that has a few drips but it's keeping most of the rain off and looking at my camera trap absolutely no success um, and also when I'm looking at it 
I don't know if I'm enjoying the picture anymore. Like the framing when stuff has come through it is reasonable, but I don't think it's the best. And with only three weeks left, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is actually move from this location back down uh, to another spot that I know um, and that we've seen on T3 because I think we've had more uh, knowledge, footprints of jaguars and pumas going that way and this section has just been a lot more void of footprints and things like that. So I'm actually going to shift this down, uh, take everything out and, and move it back because I think that there's a better spot where I can make better use of this camera trap. A um, bit of a shame because there really is some nice um, kind of red uh, kind of seed pods that are dropping down, flowers that drop down from above. But I just think overall the composition isn't perfect. So what I'm going to do is shift this, move it back towards camp a little bit to a spot where we know we've had a good pass through. And fingers crossed we might get something good. But it is still absolutely throwing it down. And probably what I'll do is take it all back to camp and give it a good dry out before I put it out again. Um, and then we'll see what we get but but right now as I'm just out of the rain for a little bit I might eat my lunch before I head home it's a little bit early but uh, whilst I've got the makeshift uh, tarp up it makes sense to eat here rather than whilst I'm getting soaked so uh, time to tuck in The rain has finally started to clear and after I took apart my other camera trap, bunged it in my bag to bring back, uh, I've walked down to my second uh, setup that we passed through earlier. Now this trigger when I checked it had 15 uh, on it that to me is a really good sign. If you have a really high number on the trigger like 100 or something like that, the likelihood is, is that something's gone wrong um, and that you've just got it false triggering for some reason maybe the weather conditions anything like that just the way you've set it up um, but I can see 15 that's really really good so I cracked open the camera and what I got was awesome uh, I got a couple of triggers of just like smaller rodents something that you know nothing really that interesting and then as I moved through I had some of the researchers footprint and then an ocelot that came through the other night um, it's literally exactly where I want it, right here um, in the middle ground where I focused up for looking straight at the camera that is so nice indeed. Um, this is a Nikon D3100, you know, it's like a hundred pound camera that I bought second hand uh, to work with camera traps. It really proves that you don't need the most expensive gear to make really nice images. Um, this shot, I'm hoping that the focus and everything is absolutely perfect and uh, sharp where it should be. But from the back of the camera, it looks pretty good. And I'm really excited to switch this out uh, and keep working at this location with the trap. I think that over the next couple of days, I'm going to come back to this spot, just tweak things a little bit, get them just that little bit more improved and dialed down. Because looking at the site, it might be a really good one um, to switch lenses. I've got the 18 to 55 on here, again, just a kit lens, but I might swap it out to the 12 to 24 to give me a bit more of an interesting shot, move it a bit closer with a wider lens to make kind of a bit more of an impact -y shot, something a little bit more interesting. Um, but overall, it's really starting to look quite good and massively exciting. Like, my heart is beating faster. It's just so good when you get a shot on the camera truck. It just feels like Christmas. You're so excited to open it and look through, and most of the time you get absolutely nothing but an ocelot. Well, I mean, that's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna take the card out, um, refresh a few things, and then just make sure everything's set and cleaned, ready to go. And then I'm gonna head back to camp and uh, take a look at some pictures. After getting back to camp completely soaked, I jumped out of my gear and fired up my laptop. Bringing the images into my Lightroom catalogue, I was over the moon. The exposure, focus, everything was exactly as I imagined it. The ocelot was looking into space with its eye contact directly towards the camera, giving me that first perfect environmental portrait of animals in the rainforest. You know, it being an ocelot, this beautiful cat, it was just such an excitement to me and a huge boost for getting out there and cracking on with more camera trap work. You know, all the effort that goes into putting cameras out, placing it, repairing them, everything like that is so worth it when you get the final shot. It can be such a huge effort to get these images, but when they come together, there really is nothing more exciting. 
With my first shot in the bag, it was time to get cracking, get back out there, and put more camera traps in locations to go after the big cats. So join me next time where we'll be going back into the rainforest after more shots, and hopefully, with our fingers crossed, we'll finally get that elusive Jaguar picture. Thank you.